what can we expect in episode 3? All of the major storylines for the season have now been set in place, so there will be a lot going on in an epic length episode. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. Please do consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. This is my preview for Season 7, Episode 3 of Game of Thrones, The Queen's Justice. As always, I won't be talking about any set leaks or giving outright spoilers, but we now have a wealth of information to go on when trying to predict what will happen. The pre-season trailers, the Comic-Con trailer, the episode preview, and of course, the clues we've got from the first two episodes. So, be warned if you want to go into the episode completely fresh. Let's start at Dragonstone. We have various shots of Danny and Tyrion staring out to sea that are almost certainly from this episode, and of course we know who they are expecting. Jon and Davos set off from Winterfell last episode, and it looks like this is them arriving at Dragonstone. When they arrive, it looks like they will be met by Tyrion and Missandei, along with some Dothraki. The meeting between Jon and Tyrion will be fascinating. It has been a long time since they met, but they both independently said that they liked and trusted each other. And Davos and Tyrion, although they haven't met yet, will probably also get on very well. They are both humanists and pragmatists, with a sceptical attitude towards prophecies, and a burning passion to protect those who cannot protect themselves. I think they will both realise quickly that however the meeting between Daenerys and Jon goes, Danny will not want to focus on the threat from the White Walkers until she has dealt with Cersei, and so they will need to hurry that process along. But back to this meeting. We see Jon and Davos escorted up the long staircase to the castle, with Jon's guards apparently left on the beach. And the Comic-Con trailer reminded us that there is more than one person waiting for them. Melisandre, let's not forget, is the one who manufactured this meeting, persuading Danny to invite Jon to Dragonstone. I think we will find her staying in the shadows initially. She will be well aware that Jon has only just banished her, and that Davos wants her dead. And she won't want to be a distraction to Jon and Danny meeting. But her presence won't remain a secret, that's for sure. I'm also intrigued what Varys will talk to her about in this shot. He was visibly shocked last season when Kinvara offered to tell him who spoke from the flames when the sorcerer mutilated him as a boy, and I wonder whether it will come up again, particularly as he mentioned the incident again just last episode. It's clearly on his mind. But of course, all this is a sideshow to the main event of Jon meeting Daenerys. She meets him sat on the throne at Dragonstone, which has to be a deliberate choice because she has very obviously not been sitting on it so far in Season 7. She wants him to bend the knee, so she will appear deliberately regal. And it wouldn't surprise me if she tries to intimidate him at some point with her dragons as well. But Jon is not someone who is easily intimidated, so I think we will see a growing respect between these two. I'm not sure if we will actually see their meeting this time, or whether the episode will cut out when they finally come together after all this time, but it's worth pointing out that this meeting is laden with meaning for both of them. Jon will know legends of the Mad King, her father, who killed his grandfather, and the Northern Lords made no bones about how little they trust her, but he knows that she is in possession of the two most powerful weapons possible against the White Walkers and the Whites, Dragonglass and Dragonfire. There is a lot resting on this for him. She, in turn, has heard of Jon's deeds in the North, and will have Melisandre's words ringing in her ears, that she and Jon both have a part to play in the wars to come. She will also know that what happens with Jon will have a major bearing on how her invasion pans out. His support would mean that she has over half of the Seven Kingdoms behind her before she even steps foot on the mainland. It isn't an overstatement to say that this is probably the most important relationship she must forge in Westeros. 
All in all, this is a big moment for both of them. But I don't think this first meeting will give either of them what they want. He won't bend the knee, and she won't commit to helping him against the White Walkers. Heading over to King's Landing, we see Euron arriving with prisoners in tow. This is the present he promised to give Cersei in Episode 1. He took Alaria, Tain, and Yara prisoner, and is now parading them through King's Landing as some sort of conquering hero. The cheering crowds here are actually the result of some pretty impressive message management by Cersei. She has been repeatedly telling people about Daenerys' invasion, highlighting that she is the daughter of the Mad King and is planning to burn the city to the ground with her dragons. This is obviously a bit rich from Cersei, given her own recent history, but although the crowds may not yet be ready to cheer her, they are happy to cheer someone who appears to have stopped the immediate threat of invasion by winning a crucial battle at sea. The question is, of course, what happens next? The reason Euron gave for going away was that he wanted to bring her back a present to show his worthiness as a suitor. And he has done that. Three presents, in fact. And so the ball will now be back in Cersei's court. Will she now accept Euron's marriage proposal? She's obviously impressed to an extent, because unlike in episode one, Euron has been allowed onto the top step of the throne room. But the official episode description for episode three includes a curious phrase. It says, Cersei returns a gift. She will want to keep Ilaria, I'm sure, as she will want to exact revenge for killing Marcella, but I think this means that she will give Yara back to Euron as his spoils of war. But will she accept his marriage proposal? I think she will, on one condition. When Daenerys is dead. So expect Euron to head off again, knowing that he needs to do still more to win her hand. We also have a couple of other scenes here in King's Landing. We see Cersei talking to someone. It's not entirely clear who, but I think it's probably Jaime, saying that the war's already begun and that she has drawn first blood. This is undeniably true. Any hopes for avoiding war were scuppered by Euron's attack on Yara and Theon, and unknown to them, the Unsullied are already on their way to Casterly Rock. The Lannisters might as well now go on the attack. And before Jamie goes, we have this. I don't think Jamie will be an unwilling partner here, but as is so often the case with them, Cersei is clearly kissing him rather than the other way around. Perhaps she is still thinking on the need to create a dynasty and therefore needs children. Or perhaps she knows that this is the strongest hold she now has on him, or maybe she just wants it. Whatever her motivation, I suspect that this is possibly the last time we see this twincest in the show. The reasons for Jamie to leave her are building, and a commitment to marry Euron would certainly not help matters. And before the episode is over, he will leave King's Landing. This looks like him striding into Highgarden, judging by the foliage. If so, there is a lot of action to be getting through in this episode, which is possible as the expected runtime is 63 minutes, making it easily one of the longest ever episodes of Game of Thrones. Anyway, Jamie with Randall Tarly and probably Bronn will head off to Highgarden to forcibly secure grain supplies from the Reach. These are Tyrell lands but with many of Elena's troops focused on supporting Daenerys' invasion, as well as the Tarleys having changed sides, this may actually be quite a straightforward battle for Jaime. The interesting thing will be whether Elena Tyrell has returned home by then. It's possible that the Unsullied will have dropped her off en route to Casterly Rock, and if so, we can expect a fascinating confrontation between her and Jaime. He can't let her live, but he will not be wanting to just execute her. In fact, whether he admits it or not, he will probably have some sympathy for her. When Cersei killed Mace, Marjorie and Loras Tyrell, she also killed Kevin Lannister. 
desecrated the graves of Marcella and Joffrey, and led to the death of Tommen. They are both grieving and angry about Cersei's act of destruction. And Elena has information that she will want him to know, knowing that it will get back to Cersei. She will want to hurt Cersei with her dying breaths, and she can do this by telling Jaime that she killed Joffrey. Incidentally, this revelation will help bring Jaime and Tyrion closer together later in the season. And it's possible that she may also tell Jaime about Cersei and Lancel's affair. It isn't at all clear in the show whether Jaime knows about Cersei sleeping with Lancel, but in the books it is a massive part of what drives the two of them apart. If Elena's last words were to be her admitting she killed Cersei's beloved son, and to ensure that Jaime never looked at Cersei in the same way again, then her revenge on Cersei would be complete. As an aside, before we leave Jamie, the official show description says that in this episode, Jamie learns from his mistakes. Let me know in the comments below what you think this might be referring to. Outside Casterly Rock, we see Grey Worm put on his helmet, ready for combat. The tactics here seem to be quite similar to what they have used before. The main force of Unsullied will keep the defenders busy with a frontal assault, while a smaller force enter through the sewers. Tyrion, of course, knows the Castley Rock sewer system well, having been put in charge of it by his father years ago, so he will have already told him how to get in. And the plan seems to work really very well. We see Grey Worm here, about to enter the system, then the task force catching the castle by surprise, opening the main gates and letting the larger force in. So while Jaime may take Highguard in this episode, Daenerys' forces will take Castley Rock and on balance, neither side will have gained a huge advantage over the other. Moving far to the north, the Great Stark Reunion is now starting to look possible. We last saw Bran at the wall with Ed, but he will surely be heading down to Winterfell once Ed tells him that Jon and Sansa are there. And Arya is also heading to Winterfell, so one or both of them will probably arrive this episode. My guess, and it's only a guess, is that Bran will get there first, if only because we didn't see him last time. The episode preview didn't have much footage from Winterfell, but it does seem that this shot of Sansa walking away from the Weirwood Tree with an enigmatic look on her face is from this episode. This is pure speculation, but maybe Bran has arrived and based himself at the Weirwood Tree as you would expect. Maybe he has told her that, although he is technically heir to Winterfell, he doesn't want to do that job, as he has to be the Three-Eyed Raven now. So she is still in command. Maybe that is what prompts her smile. Or maybe he told her some of what he saw in the visions, about who John's true parents are. We can also probably expect Littlefinger to be back up to his old tricks this episode, now John is out of the way. And if Bran is safely back in Winterfell, perhaps Mira might see this as a good opportunity to head back to Greywater Watch to her father, one of the most mysterious, unseen figures in the world of Game of Thrones, Howland Reed. What else can we expect from this episode? We didn't see the Brotherhood Without Banners last episode, so perhaps we will see them arrive at Eastwatch, in line with the vision in the flames that Sandor had. Tormund will be there, so maybe Sandor can regale him with tales of how Brienne beat him up. Theon will presumably wash up on the shore somewhere, perhaps with some other survivors from the massacre at sea. It will probably be on him to head back to Dragonstone and let Daenerys know what happened. It's probably fair to say that she won't be pleased. We'll almost certainly see more from Sam as well including the result of his experimental operation on Jorah. What will be interesting will be how he covers this up. He surely won't admit to performing banned operations, so he will need to smuggle Jorah out of his cell and the Citadel while he is still recovering. And I'm sure I'll ask this every episode, but is there a chance of Gendry making an appearance? What do you think? What else do you think will happen in episode 3? Let me know in the comments below.
If you'd like to support me in producing more videos like this, as well as getting access to more of my content, please click through to my Patreon page. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to know when my next video comes out, then please click on the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are enabled. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.